Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher, and today we're going to be checking out DaVinci Resolve 15. That is right. This is a first look. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through and sort of check it out and kind of talk about some of the new cool features and what they have. Um, it's not like I mean, it's a huge update, but it's also at the same time not like anything crazy that you, <laughs> you would know how to work with. So we're going to have a DaVinci Resolve 15 here. And of course, this is a beta and I am screen recording, so you can't really totally judge the playback just based on that alone. We're gonna open up a recent project I have here. This is a cool bladesmith. Actually, he was on Forge and Fire, so very, very cool project. Um, maybe I'll link him down below. And of course, um, doesn't want to be full screen here. Let's, uh, let's reset this. For some reason, one thing that I noticed in any version of DaVinci Resolve, it does not like the idea of laptop screens. Um, I really don't know why, but either way, not a big deal. So if we start, let's uh, get back to our media page here. So if we start, of course, on our media page, really not a lot has changed on here. One of the things that they have done is they have simplified some of the menus. So when you right click on a clip um, or a folder or really anything in general, they have made these menus a little bit shorter, which is nice because of course, you know, before there was a lot of different things to select from and, you know, you could get lost in a menu and they've sort of, you know, those things are still there, but they've kept them, they've organized it better. So really on this media page, there isn't a whole lot different. When we jump over to the edit page, um, there's nothing insanely different here either, but there is some really cool, useful changes that have come up. So one of the first things, and probably the biggest thing on the edit page, is this button right here. So when we click on this button, of course, they've changed the visual look of it. It looks a little bit different, but at the same time, it still does a lot of the same things. We can adjust our track height and stuff like that. I like to keep my video track height and audio track height as low as they can. That way I can move these up here and keep the waveforms on. And then, of course, uh, what you can do, and, and this is sort of the new thing, is this stack timelines. So what you do is when you enable stack timelines, we kind of see this little tab pops up over here. And what that allows us to do is open up multiple timelines. So in this case, I know in my timeline folder, I only have one. So we're going to make a new timeline. We're just going to call this test two. So we're going to open that up. And now you can see that down here, it opened a new stack timeline. So of course, things like Premiere Pro have had this before, but it's amazing to have it in DaVinci Resolve. And of course, we could easily go back and forth between these two. Um, and what you can do is if you were to X out of this, you can actually change to test two, and then you can change between them that way. But then the really nice part is if we go over here in this little button, when we click this button, we can now actually stack the timelines. So I could open up test two, and let's say I uh, grabbed a piece of footage and threw it down here, and maybe I had an interview, and I was doing an interview, and I was like selecting the clip I wanted out of here, and dragging it up here, and of course that's something you can do. Um, like I said, you know, we've been able to do this in things like Premiere, but I think it's just awesome that DaVinci has, you know, heard what people love, and heard what people want, and they've implemented it. And of course, you can add several to if you wanted to add two or three, but of course we don't want to do that, so we're going to get rid of that, and we're actually going to, we're really going to leave that test timeline for now. So that's pretty much one of the biggest uh, changes on the edit page. Of course, they say there's going to be a lot more optimization, stuff like that. Um, but obviously, I, like I said, I can't give you a total look at that because we're using the uh, beta version. So, of course, you know, you never really know. One of the other things that sort of ties into the biggest thing is um, the new effects. So obviously the biggest uh, probably talked about feature in all of the new DaVinci Resolve 15 is the Fusion tab. Now if you don't know what Fusion is, it's full on VFX software, but we'll get into that in a minute. But one of the things that that allows you to do is bring over Fusion effects and titles into the actual edit page. So what they've done now is in the effects library, if you go to titles, one of the biggest things that I always found that DaVinci Resolve lacked was titles. And of course I do things like motion graphics, you know, just simple things like lower thirds, all that kind of stuff. So the nice thing is now is that all of these are now in the Fusion titles. They have tons of different lower third presets. Um, some of them are 3D. Now I know Adobe Premiere Pro has implemented this too with their essential graphics panel, but the difference is that you have to pay for a lot of those and the free ones don't have a lot of customization where these are all actually Fusion templates. Um, you can actually go into Fusion and edit these after the fact, which is really cool because that's kind of a nice way to learn Fusion. So I'm not gonna drop these on right now because they are super intensive on the CPU and GPU. And obviously right now I'm screen recording, so it would probably just crash everything. But of course it is awesome that they have that. So that's pretty much the big differences between the media and the edit page. But now we can see we have the new Fusion page. Now the cool thing about the way the Fusion page works is, let's say, whoops, 
So the cool thing about the fusion page, actually, let's mute these. All right, so now they have those muted. So the cool thing about the fusion page is whatever clip you happen to be on, you will send to fusion automatically. Now you can drag and drop clips above and select clips and drag those. But what you can do is let's say we're above this clip right now. I like to make sure it's selected, click on the fusion tab. And now we have a full VFX editor. So basically fusion is like the after effects on steroids. And you may say, what are you talking about? Like after effects is the best. Well, the reality is that After Effects, although it's an incredibly awesome professional software, in higher end movie productions, things that have, you know, 3D work and, and, and all that, they use node based things. Um, I know things like Nuke, I think, uh, uses nodes and, and Fusion, which is one of these big VFX softwares, is now fully integrated into DaVinci Resolve. So the fact is that you don't ever have to go out to another piece of software to do anything. You can bring things like 3D models in here. And of course, everything is node based. Um, if you don't know about nodes, you can sort of, you know, do some research and stuff. I, I recommend looking at some fusion tutorials from Black Meg's design. I am no VFX artist, so I'm not going to get into a tutorial today, but it's amazing to have all of this right here. And one of the best things is if you know right here, we have all of our tools. Now in the actual fusion program, they were a little more confusing, but they've simplified them. So now we have things like backgrounds and text nodes. And of course we can simply add those. So if you want to, you can also click shift uh, space, which is what I just did. Let's say you wanted to add a text node. So it's called text plus. Um, and now what that did was that created a new text node and then a merger node, which just merges our media and our text. And of course, I could then go in and say hello, and I could, you know, make it really big and do all kinds of cool stuff. And actually, if you go on Black Magic's uh, YouTube channel, they actually did a really cool tutorial on like 3D text, and it, it was awesome. So definitely, if you are into visual effects and you want to do some really cool visual effects, definitely go in and check out, you know, their tutorials and stuff like that. But of course, you know, you can do compositing chroma keying they do have now a keyer built in which is really nice so it's specifically for green screen keying not before you had to do the color tab um so i mean you know there's the spline editor which is really cool that's sort of um oh you can kind of see that there's the beta <laughs> so the spline editor is you know similar to the spline editor in after effects where you can keyframe things um you can go into the actual keyframes themselves um, there's just so much that you can do in here and it's honestly incredible. And, and if you're someone who, you know, does even just basic motion effects or, or motion graphics or visual effects, now that the fact that you have that in a single piece of software is pretty incredible. Now, of course we jump over to the color tab and I mean, what more can we say about DaVinci Resolve's color? Um, DaVinci Resolve has the best, uh, color grading software. You know, it is the best color grading software hands down. But one of the really cool things that they just added, which I'll kind of show you a little bit of a, uh, a look on. So now they have this LUT gallery. So if you click up here in the left hand corner and we click on LUTs, what that allows you to do is actually go through your pre-installed LUTs, so the ones that you install, and you can actually see these LUTs in live time on your clips. So if we wanted to pick one of Film Riot, which I did a video on their horror LUTs, you can, uh, I can see it starting to slow down a little bit. So we shot, we're just gonna do standard. And let's say you wanna do Crimson Peak. I can see now what my clip would look like with Crimson Peak. I could go to this, uh, now actually, whoops, I'm sorry. That's my fault. I'm actually on the wrong node. I actually have a grade on this already. So you're seeing like totally wrong stuff. <laughs> So now if we have the original clip selected and we go into our LUT browser and we find the LUTs we want, what we can do is actually scroll over and we can see that it applies those LUTs. We can actually scrub through the clip and we can change to another clip. And that actually looks really good. So we can decide what we want. We can right click. We can either apply the LUT to the clip, append it to a node graph. Um, we can add to favorites, which that's really cool. So basically what this does is just simplifying going through LUTs, which is honestly huge because to me you know i'm someone who i have tons of lut packs i subscribe to lutify every year and it's just like one of those things where i don't know what you know mincar mencar and mintar all these things look like so it's great to now have this lut preview where i can easily go through and see exactly what these are going to look like on my footage and then actually apply those after so that's incredible and i know there's a couple uh small enhancements to the king um, I think you can actually like grab on the actual physical piece itself. Um, you know, that, that's nothing really huge, uh, but that is definitely really awesome. 
And I do know if you do have the collaborative version, so if you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve and you collaborate, there is a couple new optimized tools for collaboration. So those are cool, but again, I don't have that. Uh, I don't have anyone I collaborate with, so I really can't talk too much about that. Now, of course, Fairlight has been added last year, and that was an incredible, incredible piece of software to have added. Now, we're going to unmute these here quick. And to me, this is just some of the, the best software out there um, when, you th when, you, when it comes to audio editing, especially inside of a software. So we're going to pull up these clips here. And one of the newest things that they've added into this edition is two of the biggest new things are the sound library and ADR. Now, what the sound library allows you to do is actually hook up to a database so that could be locally or on a server or whatever it may be and you can actually have all of your sound effects stored in DaVinci Resolve and you can actually search them so I don't have this set up right now but you can actually have you know let's say you have all of your sound effects in here and let's say you needed a door uh, door slam or something you could search door slam and it's immediately gonna pull up anything that's tagged with those names so it's really cool if you're you know someone who maybe does Foley sound effects and you have a massive sound library or you're a sound designer and you have all this sound design that you want to go through you're not in finder or you know the the file explorer trying to search through and find that piece of music you need or you know search through the the OS basically you can now do it right in DaVinci Resolve so that's pretty incredible and of course there also is the new ADR which is nice because you can now natively record in DaVinci Resolve um, whether it be ADR or really anything but the cool thing is there's a lot of ADR tools that actually help you set up cues so you can set up a cue to make sure an actor knows exactly when they need to start talking or some type of cue where they need to maybe pause for a second or whatever it may be. So it's really nice that you can dive deep into ADR and obviously get the best audio that you possibly want. Now some of the smaller things they've added is now they have a new timeline strip, which if you click, um, actually shows the clips and then we can do the, uh, where is it? Down here, it's kind of like a film strip. Now when we play through, it'll actually scroll through those clips. And then one thing that's really cool, which I'm not gonna do because it's gonna play the audio, but you can actually lock your timeline so basically what or excuse me lock your playhead so what that means is instead of it playing so let me kind of show you what that looks like so as you can see it basically moves our timeline instead of moving our playhead um, that's something I guess that's been in DAWs for a long time I'm not someone that really you know I don't care either way basically but that's stuff definitely something really cool and you know if you're used to working that way it's really nice to work that way and of course, the last thing that they've added in Fairlight is some new audio effects. So if you go here to FX, Fairlight, you can see that they have, whoops, they have tons of new stuff for modulation, noise reduction, de-esser, reverb. I mean, pretty much every effect that you could want is now totally in there. And of course, DaVinci Resolve does uh, support VST. So if you ever downloaded other ones or you bought other ones, you can use those inside of Fairlight as well. So it's pretty much just... It's all encompassing, but it also is open enough where you can use other pieces of software and do some honestly incredible stuff. And now on the delivery page, there really isn't a whole lot different. I know they did add Netflix, which is really cool. So if you're somebody who has to output to Netflix, whether, you know, I know they have very certain requirements for things. And, you know, they've added a couple of optimization pieces here and there. But honestly, DaVinci Resolve 15 now is a full blown, I don't even want to say editor anymore because it's more than that. It's a video editing software, it's a compositing visual effects software, motion graphics software, and a full audio suite. And that's the thing that is absolutely incredible about DaVinci Resolve, and I think 15 just pushes it further. It just shows us that Blackmagic, you know, they are looking ahead at video editing and, and post-production in general. And I think it's incredible, and I think it's in... It, it really shows a lot about how they're looking to the future and I think how later versions of DaVinci Resolve are going to be um, whether you know they're just gonna refine all of these and, and they're looking to add more stuff so you know definitely if you're an editor I personally switched from Premiere Pro which you can see that video down below in the, in the description but I switched over from Premiere Pro and I completely canceled everything now I actually did cancel the photography package and went with uh, where is it affinity photo and um, I'm really happy and DaVinci Resolve has completely filled every need that I have. So definitely, if you're someone who uses another NLE and you're thinking about switching, totally look at DaVinci Resolve. It, it's honestly, this, this release itself is incredible. The fact that you can do everything from the editing to the visual effects to the audio post workflow, the color, all right inside of the software, 
and you don't have to ever purchase another piece of software or and you can if you want you know you can have other stuff and you can work with other programs and that's the best part and of course now with everything integrated it just allows you to you know you can have several people in one production house using one piece of software and that's the other part is it's free now of course some of the pro features you may need um, but there's very few of them codec support collaboration things like that but the best part is, is DaVinci Resolve Studio is only $300 and you have it for life now granted who knows maybe in a couple of years they'll stop that but I mean for now I bought DaVinci Resolve 14 Studio and I got a free upgrade to 15 I'll probably get a free upgrade to 16 17 unless they change something in the future but honestly it's it's amazing so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative to you, and I hope you guys really take out, you know, take a look at DaVinci Resolve 15 because I think you'll be incredibly impressed, and I think it's something that a lot of editors should should really think about, especially if you're on another program and it's maybe causing you some problems or stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna have a lot more tutorials coming soon on some of these features more in depth as I play with them a little bit more and learn some more and, and get some more content. I also have a very cool sponsorship coming up soon for some travel and budget lighting. So definitely stay tuned, make sure to subscribe. Also follow me on Instagram, Cameron96G, and be sure to check out all my behind the scenes photos there. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll catch you guys soon.